How's it boo? How's it boo? Trust that you all are well. Greetings, guidance, blessings, healing. It is our time together, and I am glad to see you all as we prepare for you. Here's a quick summary of what's cracking. Okay, so we have I'm gonna jump it off with some Asar stance. Then we're gonna get into our Qigong, get into some aspects of the healing Qigong. And then here, we'll get right into looking at the Asar stance, the Qigong, and we'll slide directly There we go. And we'll get it in. Hopefully it'll be a good session for everyone. Looking forward to it. Glad to see all the folks that are here in a timely fashion. So without any further ado, what we're gonna do is really get cracking. So as always, we want to be in a place where we can be heard, we can be seen, we want to be relaxed. Hopefully everybody's had a good night's rest, it's a little bit of hydration. Okay, so we're gonna bow, we're gonna stand so we can bow in. We wanna get you standing, feet together, forming a 90 degree angle. We're gonna be in Wu Chi position as we stand. Right, good, good, good. Heels together, forming a 90 degree angle, knees slightly bent. Bottom tucked. Shoulders relaxed, head level. <laughs> Tongue at the roof of the mouth as if you're saying letter L or the letter N. Put the tongue in the soft palate. And bring the hands out to pyramid hands. Cross the thumbs. And from here, you're going to shift all your weight to your right leg. You're going to come up on your left toes. You're going to step to your left heel first, a little wider than shoulders width. And to check and see that those heels are on the same line. You're going to sit down on the legs. You're going to tuck your butt. All right. Now you're going to open the hands as you're giving someone a hug. At heart level, I'm gonna check and make sure the shoulders are relaxed, arms relaxed, hands relaxed, wrists open. And from here, you're gonna close your eyes, hold the position. As the eyes are closed, you wanna make sure that the legs flow like the roots down into the soil. And that the torso is seen as the tree trunk. The arms are the branches and your hands are the leaves, so they are light. And we're employing the bellows breathing which means that as you breathe in, you push the stomach out. As you breathe out, you pull the stomach in. Breathing in, pushing the stomach out. Breathing out, pulling the stomach in. Full breaths. All right, now that we're here, you wanna see the head level. And with the head level, you want to now close your eyes so that you can see the tree that your body has become. You want to see your legs as the roots of the tree. You want to see your torso as the tree trunk, arms are the branches, hands are the leaves. Your head is floating with this golden thread extending into the heavens, holding you up, extending and expanding the spine. Remember the feet are a little wider than shoulders width. 
sitting down on those legs, engaging the thighs. You want to see the breath come down through and past the lungs and fill the belly. And who is it? Are our feet parallel or turned out? No, the, the toes are turned out on a 45 degree angle, and you want to be wider than shoulders width. Mm -hmm. Yes, that that's, a, that's a lot better. Yes, yeah, so that way you can sit down on the legs. And now when you tuck your bottom, you should be able to feel the thighs engaged completely. You should feel on your feet, you should feel the entire surface area of the sole of the foot being used. Yes? Yes. All right. Now you'll get a different experience than where you were before. <laughs> All right, bellows breathing. Okay, come forward in my shorts. All right. Mm -hmm. No. All right. Check in with your body. That's how you know us. This is the shelter in place edition of our sessions. <laughs> All right, keep going. Again, we've only got to about 12 breaths. Widen those legs, sit down on those legs, sit down. And once you sit down, tuck that butt under so that you're on top of the legs, on top of your body. There we go. That's very important. And so as we get a little more space, as I'm clearing out the home studio, I'll get you a 360 of what the body should look like. However, on our YouTube channel, you should go, you, you should go there. And what you'll find is we have the way how you get into the Asar stance already set up as a little standalone video. So I entreat you to check that out at your earliest opportunity. I'll see if I can get that posted to some of the other social media later today as well. So that way we're in here, we're working on 12 breaths. So go ahead, let's get it in. Nice and easy, don't rush those breaths. Good, good, hold the position. And you see, because we're in the position that we're in, what I'd like you to do is get a little bit lower and we're gonna hold it for four breaths right here at this, at this height. You should really feel it in the thighs. into pyramid hands. All right, you're gonna shift the weight to your right, slide that left leg in. And now that we're here, we're gonna get into something that we should have done right before we started, but I wanted to really jump in and get going. So while I bow in early, we didn't bow in together. So let's go ahead and we'll say to all the masters that have gone before us, we bow. Bring it into Wuchi position, slide that left leg all the way into Wuchi position. And we say, teacher to student, student to teacher. 
getting our Shia Sha on. All right. So if you're watching this on the delay on the internet at home later, make sure you get your bow into the ancestors first. All right. So now, back here, we're feet are in Wuchi position, hands right here in pyramid hands. Once again, you're going to shift the weight to the right. You're going to step left, wider than shoulders width. Heel first. Sit down on those legs. Maintain that 45 degree angle. You're going to open the hands, palms up. They're going to point the same direction as the knees and toes. This is called holding the golden balls. You want to make sure that the wrist is higher than the elbow. The hands are pointing the same direction as the knees and toes, I said before. You want to see a ball of golden white light like the sun in the palm of each hand. Two breaths. Rotate the palms so that they now face the floor. Hands are still relaxed. This position is called oneness. Two breaths here. And as you breathe in, tuck your chin as we breathe into the turtle. Breathe out, bending forward from the waist, keeping the back flat. We call this the drawbridge. Two breaths. Keep the back flat, chin tucked. Point the hands between the legs, keeping the back flat, chin tucked. Arms relaxed, shoulders relaxed, not touching the body. Keeping the knees bent. Breathing into oneness. Shoulders relaxed as you come up into oneness. Two breaths. All right, now with this next one, it's called rabbit through the chute. It's like swimming. You're going to reach back behind the kidneys, straighten the legs slowly, come up to the center of the forehead, then you press down. Do not go higher than the center of the forehead. So you're breathing in on the way up, out on the way down, keeping the bottom tucked. Do not lock the knees. Keep the shoulders relaxed through the movements. Keep going. Remember the buttocks stay tucked, tight. Now we're gonna pick up the pace a little bit. Stay with me, best you can. Remember to reach back behind the kidneys. I sign out.
no sound. All right, I'm gonna slow it down. I sign out. No sound. Into oneness. From here, we're going to go into our raising elbows. It's here. So in, remember, out, in, out. Got it? Here we go. into oneness. Right hand on top of left hand, palms up, thumbs touching, hands beneath the navel, arms and hands not touching the body. Rotate the left hand on top. You wanna to see a ball of light like the sun in between the palms of the hands. I'm going to breathe into oneness. Two breaths. Take the chin as we breathe into the turtle. Breathing out to the drawbridge. Two breaths. Point the hands between the legs for two breaths. Keeping the back flat and the chin tucked. Into oneness. Two breaths. Pyramid hands for two breaths. Good 
You're gonna shift the weight to the right leg, slide the left foot in. Back to Wu Chi position. Two breaths. As you exhale, let the hands fall and shake it out, opposite hand, opposite legs. Excellent, feet parallel, shoulders width. Take your right hand, put it here. Left hand is here. All right, so here we go, breathing in, exchange the hands. Out, in, out. Keep the shoulders relaxed. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. Breathing in, bring the left hand up. Breathing out, take the hands down together. Bring the hands together, interlace finger fingers pointing outward. So palms out, right at the heart level. You're gonna breathe in, take them up over the head and come up on the balls of the feet. Breathing out, bring it back down. Got it? You're gonna do this eight times. Here we go, in. And we let the hands fall to the side. Shake it out, opposite hand, opposite leg. Right back to feet parallel, shoulders width here. Make sure that the elbows at the height of the shoulders best you can. That's the ideal position, shoulders relaxed. Make sure that the hands are pointing towards the head, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Two breaths. Palms forward, two breaths. Let the hands come down as you exhale again. And we're gonna go right into swinging arms. So as you come up onto the balls of the feet, rotate the hands back onto the heel. Up. All right, let them swing. So the goal, let them slow down and stop on their own. Don't stop them abruptly. The goal is to build up to doing that for 90 seconds at a time. You don't want to be completely out of breath when you finish. The movement is designed to build and strengthen the immune system. Is it is a lymph system flush move, mover of the lymph fluid. It also benefits the cardiovascular and cardiopulmonary system, in addition to moving the lymph fluid through all of the lymph glands. All right. Now we're gonna open the chest. Again, feet parallel, shoulders width. And remember the outside of the shoulders, not the inside of the shoulders. Okay, all right. You're gonna sit down. Gonna breathe in, straighten the legs, continue to breathe in until the hands reach to the height of the shoulders, continue to breathe in 
Turn the palms so they face each other. Continue to breathe in. Arms separate. We're breathing in till the shoulder blades touch. Continue breathing in. Chin up. Arc back if you can. That's the in breath. Exhale. Coming forward. Head is level. Arms come back. Turn the palms down. Whole body sinks. Don't take the knees past the toes. We do that five times. Here we go. And again, that's the goal breath. Everyone may not be able to do it in one breath. It's okay. And for those of you at home that are watching, this may be your first session. And I think, wow, this is pretty intense. It is, because this is our second series. What I would humbly offer is take an opportunity and check out some of our earlier videos from April and March and May. They'll enable you a chance to get your body so you can move gradually with us. Because our goal is not what you could do today. It's not how awesome you are today. Last one is that can you do what you did today, tomorrow? All right, and then shake it out, opposite hand, opposite leg. The goal and primary <laughs> piece for the Kemetic Aha and Sama Association or CASA is designed so that you make a consistent commitment to a lifestyle change. And so that the work that we do enables you to make a consistent commitment to a lifestyle change. So it's not just about what you do today, it's about whether or not you can do that same thing tomorrow. So our goal is what we go through, how we have you move, sets you up so you can do the same thing the next day, and then slowly build every day. Got it? Awesome sauce. So now while the feet are parallel and shoulders width, what we're going to do is we're going to tap the body and turn the waist. So it's here, start at the shoulders. And you're not just turning the waist. You want to see yourself as also shifting and go down the front of the body, tapping all the way down to the abdomen, tapping the kidneys in the back. And then on the way back up. All right, and we just let it slow down and stop. <sighs> All right, we're gonna go. So the right hand is on top of the left hand here, like so. Feet are still parallel, shoulders width. I'm gonna continue that kind of waist swing, hip turning motion. So you're gonna shift all the way to your left, turn, Rotate the hand so now that your left hand is on top, you're gonna to shift all that weight. Come on back to your left side, turn the waist, exchange hands, and come on back to the right. This is called wave hands like clouds. Shift the hands, keep the shoulders relaxed. Exchange hands, shift the weight, turn the waist. Exchange hands, shift the weight, Turn the waist. Exchange hands, shift the weight. Exchange hands, shift the weight, breathing in. Exchange hands, and out. In. Out. In. And out, bring both hands down in the middle. You're gonna bring in sunrises over the mountain and straight up. When they reach the height of the shoulders, use your bicep to pull the wrist toward the body, keep the elbows tucked under. And as you exhale, press the hands down. Again, this is called sunrises over the mountain and sunsets. 
You will find this movement in pretty much every system of Tai Chi Chuan. And we teach the Yang variety of Tai Chi Chuan through the branch that came down through our great grandmaster Dalu. So these movements here are nice centering movements. So they root you into the earth, make sure your butt is tucked. And they also allow you the opportunity to be prepared to move left, right, front, back while protecting yourself from the front and being prepared to respond to inward, we'll say contact from any direction. And it prepares your entire body so that you're prepared to defend yourself using every part of the body that you have at your disposal from your head to your fingers, your wrists, your elbows, your knees, and your feet. All can be done right here from sunrises over the mountain and sunsets. This is the why we spend so much time in this movement because not only is it central to the practice, but that within it contains so much that you can do to keep oneself safe. And we've reached somewhat of a crossroads in our practice. At least our online sessions will continue. And for those that came to in-person classes, I'm in discussion. If your classes were indoors, I'm in discussion with uh, hosts for our sessions to see when and how those will return and how soon that's gonna happen as we come back as Los Angeles County is entering its phase where they're opening gyms and workout facilities. For those that met with us under the park, we will be talking about what's happening with that in the group and that will be decided during our next gathering. So for that, it's covered for the Tuesday, Thursday class of which this is a part or whenever you get this online, they will continue because they were designed to aid and assist folks who are dealing with being alone during this pandemic and then also during the reign of this president, which was already a pandemic, to be able to allow you the opportunity to learn how to move energy through your body so it doesn't stay stagnant. So this is a good movement if you're angry, if you're bitter. And it's not just to move the energy. That's not what this is about, moving energy and letting it go. I mean, that's a piece of it. But the goal is to use the energy as information and then move it so that you're able to make a clear, level-headed decision, not one based out of the emotion. One that speaks to posterity. All right. So from here, this is our last one. All right, shake it out, opposite hand, opposite leg. All right, so here we go. You're gonna, what you're gonna do is you're gonna breathe in, palms facing you. And as you exhale, just let the hands fall. In, palms facing you, and let them fall. Okay, palms facing out, breathing in, and let them fall. In, and let them fall. Excellent. Now, let's grab a seat real quick. Let's see where we are. Oh, excellent. Get a nice, comfortable squat. Give you a second to establish your seats and reestablish your place there. Excellent. We're going to now do our alternate breathing exercise. So I'm gonna get my hair out of the way. It turns out that it got a little warm in here. My hair got a little hot. <laughs> All right. 
Hopefully your body is warmed up a little bit too. If you're getting into that bellows breathing, that is exactly what should be happening. That body should be warm. Okay, one of the beauties of this practice is it teaches you and hopefully you'll begin to see that when people really wanted to learn alchemy, it was a metaphor for the human body. It was a metaphor for what we were able to do with this course material and how we were able through the course of this practice and similar practices, not just out of Africa, but other places they developed it too, as a way to refine this course metal into the beauty, the power, and the majesty of gold. For gold was seen as that which radiates like the sun. And so with that in mind, we're gonna do our alternate breathing, alternate nostril breathing. So you're gonna start taking your right thumb, blocking off the right nostril, sitting tall, middle and index finger into the center of the forehead. You're gonna take your left hand, put it in the first mudra, thumb and index finger touching on top of the lap, shoulders relaxed. All right, here we go. Make sure that nostril is blocked off. Breathing in. Out. Remember to do the bellows breathing. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. Breathing in out 10 times fast, fire breath. Deep breath in. And release. Changing hands, no breath. Switching hands. That left hand is blocking, left thumb blocking off the left nostril. Middle index finger, here we go, breathing in. Out. Tell them not to interrupt this Kung Fu session. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In, out, fire breath, deep breath in, out, both hands in the first mudra on the lap, breathing in, out. You should notice how both nostrils are pushing together in, out, in, out, in, out, fire breath. Deep breath in, chin down, release. Breathing in and out. Make sure the body has released that and let the chin go, head level, breathing in and out. In. And uh, excellent, everybody made it. <laughs> We're at the point where we call it the wisdom from the sages of the ages. All right, so now, for those of you that have never taken a class from me in person, today's class is pretty close to what an in-person class is like. So we've been building <laughs> towards 
what my class in person is like. So if you got a good sweat going, if you're feeling really good, understand that that's the first part. This My class is normally two hours. So you leave still feeling just as energized as you feel right now. I want you to understand, you aren't getting less in this online session. It's just a little more intense. And so as a result, we have a full two hour class for those of you that are in person at our uh, the one that we do in preparation for our martial arts. So if you're ever in town, you're visiting, you know, come on, get your two hours in and transform your day, transform your life. Consistent commitment to a lifestyle change. Here we go, wisdom from the sages of the ages. All right, and so this is an awesome one. It says, and so this one's taken from the Tao Te Ching. This is the version that we're using. You can find your own. If you have your own copy, that's fine. It's just the one that I got. Okay, here it is. Check it out. In harmonizing your hung and po to embrace the one, can you concentrate without deviating? In attuning your breath to induce tenderness, can you become like a newborn babe? In cleansing and purifying your mystic mirror, can you make it free from all stain? In loving the people and ruling the state, can you practice non-interference? When the heavenly gate opens and closes, can you play the part of the female? When your light shines forth in all directions, can you ignore it with perfect equanimity? To produce things and nourish them, to produce but not to claim ownership, to act, but not to presume on the result, to lead, but not to manipulate. This is called mystic virtue. Awesome sauce. And so that is our reading from the wisdom of the sages of the ages. So what I'd like to do at this moment right now, right now is to thank all of you for coming, for joining us, wherever you may be receiving this like to do now is to say to all the masters that have gone before us, we bow. Teacher to student, student to teacher. It has been my distinct pleasure to share this time with you. I look forward to seeing you in person again or through the interwebs and the ethers. That's a poo.